We don't have authorization to take him, shouts the military paramedic. A wounded Ukrainian soldier with a tourniquet on each leg to slow the bleeding is lifted from the car. OK, we've got to go further down the road. Let's move now. From an ambulance point on a virtually deserted road, we drive towards Solidar. We pass a few Ukrainian military vehicles heading the other way. There's no obvious sign of a Ukrainian withdrawal from the salt mining town that's seen some of the most intense fighting in recent days. Army medics wait at intervals along the way to take the injured to hospitals back from the front line. As the battle continues, we have to stay in place. If we could wait closer, we would. But we are ready to move for injured soldiers or civilians. The soldiers say the road over the brow of the hill is being shelled. Russia says it's taken full control of Solidar, but the smoke rising from impact sites the explosions from almost constant artillery and heavy machine gun fire suggests otherwise. Ukrainian troops in these APCs, these armored personnel carriers heading towards Solidar. This is only a couple of kilometers down this road. Troop carriers at tree lines seem prepared for a potential withdrawal of soldiers. There's Western-supplied weaponry here, but a lot of it's Soviet-made. This anti-aircraft gun is almost 60 years old. It will be hard for us to push them back. We'll suffer big losses. They move in such great numbers in Solidar that sometimes our guns overheat as we try to shoot as many as we can. Soldiers dig fresh trenches on a slope in case Russian forces push up from the valley. Others watch the battle unfold. Ukrainian forces still have a foothold in the western outskirts of the town, they say. The fight for Solidar isn't over yet. Charles Stratford Al Jazeera, near Solidar, eastern Ukraine.